What's up everyone? On today's video, we're covering the top seven things you need to know before moving to Aberdeen, New Jersey. We're gonna go through a couple different topics like the location, commute to New York City, shopping and dining, and a few others. If this is your first time to the channel, my name is Steve McCutcheon and I'm a realtor at Berkshire Hathaway. On the Live in Central New Jersey channel, we cover everything related to the Central Jersey real estate market. So if you wanna be the first one to know what's going on in either Monmouth or Ocean County real estate, feel free to click the bell, hit the subscribe button. Let's get this video started. Coming in at point number one is going to be the location of Aberdeen. So Aberdeen, as you can see from the photo, is located in the most northern part of Monmouth County, and it borders a few different towns like Matawan, Marlboro, and Old Bridge, just to name a few. Aberdeen is actually kind of cool. It's broken down into two non-continuous uh, pieces, and Matawan is, a, is the township that breaks it up. Uh, way back when, they were all kind of one big town, and then uh, I think back in 1977, it was broken up into two different ones. So anytime you kind of hear someone talk about like Matawan or Aberdeen, you'll often hear them say like the Matawan-Aberdeen area, and they pretty much coincide with each other. There are three major roadways that go through Aberdeen. That's going to be Route 34, Route 35, and the Garden State Parkway. Route 34 and 35 are going to be non-toll highways, while the Garden State Parkway is a toll highway. All three of them, though, are going to bring you north to south throughout the rest of the state. Then you have, uh, if you want to look for a beach, you can head up to Cliffwood Beach. Cliffwood Beach is a part of Aberdeen. It's an unincorporated community, which basically just means they have no political standing. That They don't have like their own mayor or anything like that. And they take a, they're a part of Aberdeen for that kind of stuff. But there's, it's kind of it's like its own little town, little, own little area, and that's going to be in the northern part of Aberdeen. And that gets you, helps get you to the shore over there. If you want to go to one of the more popular beach destinations, recommend, like I would say, like Belmar, Asbury Park, or maybe even Long Branch. You're pretty much looking about like a half hour drive away. Point number two is going to be the commuting to New York City. So because of uh, Aberdeen's location and its proximity to New York, a lot of people will live there but also work in the city. The reason is the city makes a lot more money, but then you don't want to necessarily deal with the city lifestyle or if you want, want to raise a family, get more land, get a bigger house, Aberdeen is a good spot to do so. It only takes you about an hour to an hour and a half depending on which commute you take, and there's three main ones. You have driving yourself, taking the train, or taking the bus. If you drive yourself, as you can see from the photo, it says about an hour, I would say it's more realistically like an hour 15, maybe an hour and a half, depending on from when you get to your home specifically, give it like a real address to your actual job site as well. So the majority of the traffic is just going to be in that connection, like that northern part of New Jersey, and then where everyone tries to go into New York, which bridge, um, the rest of that drive is going to be relatively pretty smooth for the most part, unless there's obviously accidents, bad weather, anything along those lines. So I would say if you drive yourself looking for hour 15 at the pretty much the most. If you take the train, there's the Adawan, or Adawan, Aberdeen Matawan train station. They combine one over there, and that's going to take you roughly about an hour from that train, list, uh, train location. It's pretty much right in the middle of Aberdeen, kind of like where uh, Matawan breaks off or breaks uh, Aberdeen up into two spots. The last one's going to be taking the bus. Again, as you can see from the photo, there's you're looking at about it says an hour. I would recommend it's probably still close to that hour 15, hour and a half, just like commuting or driving yourself would be as well. The only difference is, you know, someone else is driving you, maybe you want to listen to a podcast, uh, just kind of gives you a little bit of downtime and relaxation before you get back home or get to work. Coming into point number three is going to be the demographics of Aberdeen. So the population is a little over 19,000, which is up about 10% over the last decade. So pretty good population growth there. Then you have about 33% of the households um, have, a child, have a child under the age of 18, and 56% of the households were married couples living together. So it's just kind of using that data to reference who, who might be in the area. More likely than not, you're dealing with some young families or a lot of young families, and if you were to move to that area, that's probably who your neighbor would most likely be. The median household income for Aberdeen was $121,000, and the median sales price for a home in 2023 was $444,000. Coming in at point number four is going to be the school system and education for Aberdeen. So when it comes to education, Aberdeen and Matawan actually pull the resources together to form the Matawan Aberdeen Regional School District. According to niche.com, it's rated an A minus, has a 13 to one student teacher ratio, and houses about 3,800 students. There's four elementary, one middle, and one high school, and they rank roughly in the top 25% for diversity in New Jersey, top third for just best uh, school districts in New Jersey, and top half for athletes. If you're looking for more of a private option, once you get to high school, you can head over to St. John Vianney's, also known as SJV in the area. It's located in Homedale, which is, but in like the more northern parts of the one that borders Aberdeen. So if, depending on which side of Aberdeen you live in, uh, it's a pretty short drive over there. So the student teacher ratio is going to be 12 to one. They have 890 students in the area or go, that go to the school, but the tuition is gonna cost you a little bit here and niche.com has it at $15,475 for the highest grade that they offer. Point number five is going to be the different housing options in Aberdeen. I like to break it down into three major categories. So you go from like condos and townhomes, adult communities, and you have your single family homes. 
So for condos and townhomes, there's a lot of different subdivisions in Aberdeen. Some that are gonna be much bigger than others, but realistically, you're probably looking at anywhere from like seven to 10 of them just kind of in, inside of Aberdeen themselves. They have quite a few different options. So you have one bed condos that are going to be the lowest one I think was sold for $250,000. That was a one bed condo, but then they all would go all the way up to the three bed townhome story, uh, style. And that's going to be the highest one was like the low sixes, but majority of them maybe like the high fives. When it comes to adult communities, there's none located in Aberdeen, but right next door over in Matawan, there's a pretty big community and it's going to be Cheesecake Village. You have one and two bedroom units, but they're all going to be one stories. There will be some that are going to be above those. So they have uh, ground floor units and then one more story above that. So obviously if you're looking to retire and you're like maybe not in the best shape, Medically, and you wanna just stay on one story, make sure you just buy a ground floor unit there. Then when you get to single families, the price ranges again are going to differ pretty heavily. You have Cliffwood, then you have Aberdeen. So in that Cliffwood section, more towards the water, you have some smaller homes, kind of more condensed together. Um, obviously gotta fit as many in there as you possibly can if you're uh, talking about the beach. But um, with that being said, some of them are gonna be made like those two bedroom ranches and they're gonna go in that like that 250, 300 range. And you can work your way up to all those larger single family homes. The highest sale last year in Aberdeen was $860,000. I would say though the bulk, like the median price range is going to be between four and 600,000. So that's like the majority of sales are going to be, but you're gonna have uh, some on either end of them as well. Point number six is going to be different shopping and dining options in Aberdeen. So there's two main locations for this and it's going to be Route 35 and Route uh, 34. 34 is gonna be more specifically in Aberdeen itself. You have ShopRite, um, Stop and Shop, Lavodi's over there, Dollar Tree, and plenty of other different businesses, small businesses uh, up and down Route 34. When you head over to Route 35, you're gonna have everything that I just mentioned on Route 34, but also just a little bit more of a selection as well. They have an Aldi, uh, Lidl, Costco for when it comes to food, Home Depot and Lowe's for home improvement stores, and the list pretty much just goes on and on. The only thing with Route 35, and that's kind of like a little bit of an asterisk, it's not in Aberdeen, it's going to be located in Hazlitt, so that's the only difference, but it's very close nearby. So anything you can't find specifically in Aberdeen, I can pretty much promise you're gonna find on 35 over in Hazlitt. Even Middletown, if you go a little bit farther down, they have a Target over there too, so obviously they have everything. So, But yeah, shopping and dining options in Aberdeen are plentiful. When it comes to the dining options over in Aberdeen, you have a few different options. My personally are actually kind of maybe located over in that Matawan option or Matawan area myself. Uh, you got Maloney's that's going to be on Main Street in Matawan. They have 125 beers on tap that they constantly rotate. And the Portuguese shrimp, which is like my favorite appetizer when I go over there, highly recommend getting and checking that out. Then you can go over to MJ's on 34. They are another you know bar and grill kind of restaurant. Uh, they do have some outdoor seating though on the water. So on those summer nights, it's actually pretty relaxing to sit out there. Just kind of enjoy the views and a little bit of you know peacefulness over there. The other one you would definitely want to check out is they have a hibachi restaurant and sushi over there uh, on Aberdeen near Route 34 as well. You really can't go wrong with, uh, going with that. So you have quite a few different options. And again, if you move out to that Route 35 area in Hazlitt, a lot of different chain restaurants over there too. Point number seven is going to be different entertainment options in Aberdeen. So you have two different bowling alleys that you can head over to. The first one's going to be over in Hazlitt and this is going to be Bolero. And then the other one, this is gonna be on Route 36 actually technically. And then, which is just kind of breaks off from Route 35. They intersect at one point, it's not very far from Route 35. And then the second one's going to be on Route 34. Over in Matawan, you have Strathmore Lane. So two different options for bowling alleys. Also on Route 34, you're gonna have something called Bury the Hatchet. I'm not sure if this is like a big thing anywhere else, right? It's not like huge here either, but just kind of different type of business. Uh, you have some ax throwing and it's kind of similar to bowling where you get your own little lane and you can just throw some axes. Uh, it feels a little dangerous at first, but it's kind of fun when you get the hang of it. That one might be BYOB, but I'm not 100%. Then last but not least, you'll have a couple different concert venues in the area. You've got Starland Ballroom. That's going to be located over in Cerebral, which is in Middlesex County. Uh, it's kind of an industrial vibe. It's indoor, um, not as big as some other concert venues, so it's pretty tightly packed, but highly recommend checking them out. Uh, a little bit of fame, like, you know, kind of like slightly famous in that town over there. And um, yeah, so they have some decent bands over there all the time. And then last but not least, you have uh, PNC Banks Art Center, which is located over in Homedale. If you've seen any of my other videos, I've named them quite a few times before, but uh, they're an outdoor concert venue and they have some grass seating and some, not technically indoor seating, but uh, just covered seating from the venue over top. So uh, big names over there. I've seen Luke Bryant, a lot of countries, uh, country concerts, especially during the summer, because they because it's an outdoor venue. I think they only run from April to October. I'm not 100% on the dates, but that's pretty much their peak season right there. And then, you have, like I said, Starland Ballroom is going to be, you know, you can go there anytime of the year. It's an indoor venue as well. 
Thanks so much for sticking around to the end of the video, guys. I really do appreciate it, and hopefully you gained a little bit more value and insight on what it's like to live in Aberdeen Township. If you're looking to move to the area, feel free to reach out to me. All my contact information is down below. Whether you're one month, three months, six months, or even a year out, it doesn't matter to me. Let's just get you on the right path to your real estate goals. And if you're looking to buy or sell in a different part of the Central Jersey area, check out the two videos popping up here, and hopefully they may be able to help you out a little bit too. Have a great day.